Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Noved Player, and welcome to episode 19 of the Noved Notes podcast, where we have many different uh, avatar creators, world creators, content creators, and many more awesome people on the platform. With me today, I have the amazing shorts content creator, Super Xavier. Xavier, welcome to the Nova Notes. How you doing? I'm doing really good today. Very excited to be here as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I was going to say, you know, as uh, as this is being recorded, you just got done with the uh, project community uh, panel. You know, how, how, how are you feeling about that? I'll say this is your second time, you know, doing one of these panels for project community. You know, uh, you know, what are you, what are your thoughts? Like how, how, how was it on stage? It was really exciting. I was nowhere near as nervous as I was originally because I had a vision of what I wanted to, to say and I already had it like pre-typed from the other night. I got to read over those notes made way easier by the way. Um, taking notes while having a lot of ADHD going on was a great thing. Um, but yeah talking about it and just really helping out people with the back end of content creation was an amazing experience talking about the algorithm and team building yeah absolutely and i would say i i know myself like i i was taking notes in the process as well um <laughs> uh for both the the project lens of 23 and this year as well um i will say personally like there's a lot of good information um and for those watching highly recommend going to check out the vods uh, they will be down in the description. So with that, right. Um, so let's get more, let's get more into you in this case. So you've, you've been around, you know, for a long time. So just for the, you know, audience listening over on YouTube and Spotify, you know, kind of give a brief explanation of, you know, who, who exactly is Super Xavier? So Super Xavier is when I was trying to think of a name for, by constant creation that during I wanted to go on, I thought of, you know, maybe like my actual name, which is Xavier, uh, which is super obvious to a lot of people, but hey, some people don't know. Um, and I was like, I want to be a super version of myself. I want to be my own hero. I want to save myself from uh, some difficult parts of life, maybe doubts I have, maybe any things I was scared of trying and I want to be free to not try things and go into things with a fresh mind all the time. So it wasn't a persona. It was me, but a super version of myself in terms of the work ethic that I went straight forward with. I gotcha. I gotcha. So in that case, like, you know, essentially it's a, it's a, a better, uh, no, I don't want to say better, but like a more powerful version of yourself essentially is what you went with. Yeah, I would say that's definitely yes. It's definitely a relatable thing to say the least. Um, so I guess one of the first things, you know, you you've done content creation for such a long time. Um, and funny enough, we actually had Wolveeps on uh, a previous episode. Um, and I know you've known Wolveeps for quite a long time. So how exactly did how exactly did you two meet and how did like the whole, you know, working together kind of work out in that sense? Um, actually, ironically, I do want to touch base before we met. I came across Wolfie's channel on TikTok back in the earlier shades of TikTok, in like 2019 of November. I was just scrolling through and I saw uh, one of their videos, and I was like, "This is cool." I I, I play VR chat too. It, it'd be interesting to like get into this and see like you know what could be done. And I kind of sat with that idea of doing research, but how I met Wolfie's was through a group. Um, there was. A group that got founded and the founder contacted me and about nine other people and when those people got together that is where i met wolves who was really very smart about the content they had a very good understanding of their audience and they had a very good understanding also of the algorithm and other parts of it and of all the people i talked to they were the most uh aware and knowledgeable of it at the time and it was really cool uh, talking to them. And they were the ones who told me about YouTube Shorts before it came out. So they're actually the reason I studied YouTube Shorts and pushed so hard for it because I knew about it super, super early back in March of 2020. And it came out in the U.S. in about September of 2020. So I had a five-month head start to learn. 
No, absolutely. I would say it's definitely nice to, you know, have friends that help you in that, you know, sort of context. You know, um, I would say that five months is a long time to, you know, start to learn the platform before it's even like officially out there, you know. Um, I was going to say one of the things, right, you know, so out of curiosity, because you've, you've been doing this for a long time, what inspired you to even start playing VR chat in the first place? Oh, um, I saw a bunch of Knuckles memes and I was like, I want to be one of the little Knuckles running around clicking at people. And that did not happen. Uh, in sales, and I was immune for six months because I was, I didn't know how to like, what to, what else to do. And so, so I just kind of analyzed the game and like ran around in like these little avatars and stuff that, uh, like the little meme avatars and everything. So, but it wasn't a Knuckles. I can't even remember what it was. It was like a custom made VR chat avatar. That was like a meme. And I can't, I can't say what it was. It was a VR chat made meme avatar. That's why I remember. I just don't know how to describe it. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, if we, if we, uh, if we figure it out, you know, post content, you know, we can always slap a picture up on the screen. Um, I was going to say with that, you know, uh, so what exactly, you know, so you, you love playing VR chat mainly because, you know, you know, the memes were amazing back then. So what took you into making like content in general? Like what, what drove that fire? I was a content career prior and I don't really talk about this ever with people, even people who are close to me, but I actually was a streamer for five years. I started in 2015 and my career as streaming ended, uh, towards the end of 2019. And I felt like, uh, I remember I sat down my friends i had streamed for five years i streamed for four thousand five hundred hours total and i remember 2019 i sat down with my friends for you know before everything changed in 2020 and i told them i was like hey i'm y'all know that the, the dream that i had to be a streamer and everything that I've had since i was like 17 to and they were like yeah and i was like well i'm gonna uh i'm giving up on that dream and i because i realized it was taking a lot of time and energy and i didn't make the right decisions i decided to appeal to the viewers and host custom fortnite games and it's very very a lot of trolls a lot of toxicity and the atmosphere completely changed and i dealt with it for eight months and it burned me right out and it got to a point where i didn't even want to tell like my friends hey there's all these people watch my stream because the amount of drama that was going on because people weren't following the rules in the custom games but it's too much uh that i had to deal with so eventually i sat down with my friends and said i'm gonna give up and that stuck with me i had not i can't recall the last time i gave up on anything uh, especially something i was passionate about and to hit that rock bottom was very very needed because what happened next i saw a tweet um i was scrolling through twitter one day and there was this person uh, who tweeted out this tweet and he's like hey i studied the algorithm for 300 hours and I'm going to blow up. He didn't say I might blow up. He didn't say I have a chance. He said, I'm going to blow up. And he did. Um, he he kept his word and everything. His name was uh, Dream. And when I read that tweet, I was like, okay, so I study the algorithm for about 600 hours. Does that mean I'm also guaranteed to? And the short answer is yes. I you know, I can go into more details of that in later questions. But um, in short, I studied for 600 hours and I made a plan and i had talked to someone about tiktok so i knew about tiktok i saw the potential i saw the vision i was like this is something big this is something also that could be very special to aim for and i studied the algorithm as much as i could and then i was ready to make my first video and i told myself i said at first i was gonna make a new year's resolution and upload every single day uh, but so i said forget that i'm not making a new year's resolution I'm going to start right now. And the right now was the day before the New Year's resolution stopped. So it was December 30th is when I started making my first video. It was very difficult. I had no idea how to record or any of that stuff. I just remember telling myself also that I had regret with quitting streaming. I had regret with looking at my video chat hours and seeing there were 2,000 hours. But I felt like there was potential with those hours. There was knowledge. Um, and I just needed to take all this knowledge, not be afraid, and just have fun. And what I mean, have fun, like once I studied the algorithm, I knew what I needed to do is the best way to say it. And uh, yeah, I from then on, I, I've made a video every single day since 
Uh, I think the, the YouTube channel itself has like 1.7 thousand videos on it. And it's like, it's, it's crazy. No, absolutely. I was going to say with that, right. So starting off, you know, on that December 30th, you know, cause I, I know in the, um, in the panel you had, you know, you talked about having a team and all that. So when you first started doing shorts content, you know, did you mainly solo it or did you, you know, start with a team like early on? Like how, how explain kind of how the beginnings like fared in that regard. So how the beginning happened <laughs> was I, I went, told my friends, I was like, Hey, I want to start making content and everything. And they're like, Oh yeah, cool. So here's how it'll go. I'd wake up. I would go to see who's online. A lot of my friends would like let me in the lobbies and stuff. And then I would just get on my knees and say, please help me. <laughs> I, I need to make a video today. Please help me. See how many hours do you have? And they say hours. And then that's when I started learning. I was like, okay, I got to make these faster. My first video revealed seven hours. It was a 10 second video, by the way. Um, oh, the other ones did not ever take that long. That is the longest I've ever recorded to this day is seven hours. Um, I've never had a session that long since I've come close recently. I had a video about six hours. Whoa, that video was a big one. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what it was. It was a lot of asking for help, but the issues I ran into were they just, they were not passionate about what I was passionate about, which made sense. They, they were just chilling on beer chat and this dude's coming up be like, yo, please can you help me make this video? And they thought it was fun sometimes, but there were times where I realized that I was like, I need to have other creators around me that are making content too, so they can help me make content, help them make content. That was my mindset at the time. So that's how I ended up joining the group and me and Wolves and some other quite amazing people as well during those processes. Yeah, of course. So, it, it, you know, kind of going into the beginnings a little bit more, you know, so kind of briefly explain, you know, for those that are listening, you know, where, what type of, you know, shorts related content did you, you know, start off with? Cause obviously you got your bigger ones nowadays, you know, like the what if series and of course the Kratos series, you know, the ones that are, you know, at least in my opinion, some of the funniest things I've ever seen on VR chat shorts in general, <laughs> but you know, what, what was, what was like the inspiration beginning like what was what was like the content going from the very beginning you know what was that like oh it was i was very fortunate because the meadow on tiktok back then and it's so it's not as much as now and i can explain why in short tiktok has told the creators they want original content now and the sphere has changed but back then the they would have what a viral video and people would make their own versions of said viral video. So the formula was there. You just had to outdo the other people in that section that were making it. And it made it so, they made the process a lot easier to grab and understand. And it helped me improve my editing because instead of trying to make my own original ideas constantly all the time, which is very exhausting and really hard if you're starting out, it taught me, it was like taking it was like going to school you know they have the answers already but they want you to also find those same answers and the difference is you get to find them in your own creative way it's not set formulas every single time so what i like to do back then was make content that was the role that others were making but eventually it wasn't what i wanted to do so the next month i switched to content that was relatable like uh when you when you <laughs> When you call your girlfriend fat kind of thing and how does that end um and the comical end <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was like one of my early works um one of the funniest videos i can remember making was like my one of my like first big shot at original content where I, it wasn't trend or anything it was just and it was on like month three i was in a call with someone and he kept growling on the mic and i said listen buddy if you keep growling on the mic i'm going to record it and play the video he, he didn't believe me so i uh the video's called when an e when an e-boy becomes a lifeguard or when an e-boy saves a girl it's either it's probably when an e-boy becomes a lifeguard and he did the growl again so what i did was i took um a really popular song where it's like uh i'm a bad boy doing good things got a lemonade with a chicken wing 
um, by, I'm not sure who made it. I think it was BB, you know, it could have been BB, you know, nah, and I, about I took that song. <laughs> yeah. I took that song and I put it in the video. So the video was about a guy jumping. There's a girl drowning at the start of the video. The guy jumps the same person. Um, this can also be kind you just put the video. I can link you the video. Um, you just remind me. And basically he jumps into the water, saves the girl. And then the girl's like, Oh my gosh, thank you. But it, she looks up and sees him and he does this. Like he, he does the something Rizzy with it. And he made that growl that I recorded from the guy who I said, I'm going to record this in a video. He made the girl. <laughs> He's like, never mind. Jumps right back in the water and continues to just drown back to where she was. And the video ends. Yeah, it was, it was great. And the video got, we didn't send it to him for a long time. I forgot to send it to him, but the video blew up on YouTube. And it got, I think it's at like 2 million views now. He said to him, it had a million. I'm like, I, I, I wasn't playing games with you, but that's what I said to him. He loved the video, by the way. He loved it. He got a really big laugh at it a couple months later when he finally got to see it. Because I was like, oh, shoot, I forgot to say it to him. But it was funny because my friend who was in the call, she went and helped me with that video. She was literally in the call. She's like, I will help you with this video because I am so tired of him just doing that. Like, he just doesn't <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, my God. It was really funny, too, um, and everything. So that's pretty much was my, like, one of my first big original hits that I really had a lot of fun with. I really do like making original content now, of course, but back then, I liked making content that people could relate to. They would see a towel and it'd be like, I would call it Win You. So now I do What If series, but I used to name a lot of my towels Win You. Like, when your credit card gets declined, um, or when you go to the doctor and your mom's the doctor, or when you, I didn't make that video, by the way. I'm just, I'm just saying <laughs> relatable titles that I've seen. Um, or like when rents to do, you know, basically very relatable titles because the audience, when I was starting, I wanted to connect to them and I was like, Hey, I have related things I would like to connect with. And it helps a lot. Oh my goodness. It, it, it was a great starter. It was a great starter. No, oh, absolutely. And funny, funny that you mentioned the when you thing, like speaking from personal experience, um, I, I dabble here and there with TikTok. You know, I mainly upload the podcast shorts, but there's be like one, one, a few times I'll throw like a funny haha moment. And one of the first relatable ones I did was, um, uh, and I'll throw it up on screen, but it was, uh, when you, uh, when you don't realize you're, it was something like when you don't realize you're muted and you just start singing or something like that, like you're just it casually, you're just casually in a VC <laughs> and yeah. So you're just casually in a VC, you know, uh, having fun, whatever. And then, you know, you think you're muted and you just start singing whatever. Um, and it was, uh, it was, uh, uh, was it somebody that I used to know? I think is what it was. And originally it started off with the girl vocal. And then you just see myself and a Uganda knuckles fade in, uh, with like the, the other voice parts. And that was probably one of the, at least in my opinion, it didn't, it's not like big or anything, but it was probably one of my most interacted with um because you know it, it's a relatable thing you know so many people have done yeah that, you know or they'll stick something way out of pocket and not be muted um it's definitely <laughs> it happens to the best of us and i yeah there's a thousand of moments probably in the archive of just that alone um so yeah with that one of, one of the questions i had for you you know because you've done so many different series with so many different characters uh one of the questions i had for you was there ever a time that you had an idea in mind when it came to like a script with certain characters, but maybe finding a right character or a right avatar for that was like a challenge. Like, was there any, you know, anything like that? Recently, there was not a Fire Lord Ozai in VR chat for the longest time. And that's of, as of this year that I had to, I was like, what? There's no Fire Lord Ozai? That shocked me. And there, there are times where, like, uh, I got lucky. Uh, there was a Titan from the Mega Mind. There was one single Titan avatar in the entire game. Then we had other times where there was a Lex Luthor. Uh, I, I don't even know if it's maybe changed to this day. But there's no Lex Luthers with Bizemes. Uh, and there's, I think, two solid ones. So when it came to making the video process, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Um, so I get, how they recommend. Search of the avatars before you write down any ideas because you never know. There might be a character that you think is in the game and you think is well done 
And then it turns out that character actually isn't. And uh, luckily I have different resources for that. I can like, for instance, um, contact someone from that does Blender work and they've uploaded so many avatars. It's the person I talked to has uploaded like 700 uh, different avatars and everything. So they are like, hey, I can get that in here for you kind of thing. So the fire, that's how the fire Lord was. I finally got in the game. Um, and then there are also parts where people may private, you might find avatar, like you found a bleach, you watch avatar and I was playing it out for a video and it got privated. So that video got put on hold for two months until one day it gets unprivated. And I'm like rushed to make that video. Same for Donzo. There was a couple of Donzos that were out, but then Donzo got privated and yeah, all of these issues have only happened this year, never in the past, um, and stuff like that. So it, it does occur. So if you do fight Avatar and there's only one of them, maybe even two, make the video immediately. Don't delay that video. Make it immediately if it's a pop rise character, of course. If it's an uh, Avatar that's like, you have to purchase it, don't purchase it because the creators will check in with you on that as well. So I do make sure to purchase all purchases for Avatars. Of course, yeah, no, and I and I've seen very very few, but I have seen instances of, uh, and it's not on the creators themselves, um, because I, as you probably know, there's you know like search worlds now, like Prismix, and you know yet another avatar search world. You know there's actual worlds for this stuff now, and of course you know with how VR Chat is, you know you'll have ripped avatars. Um, a buddy of mine um, that you know did some recordings had some Twitter related things happen and you know it was a ripped avatar and it wasn't his fault he didn't know he got it from the search world um you know he didn't know um so yes what definitely 1000 percent. if the per avatar is purchasable buy it you know don't yeah it's it's nuts you know so speaking of that because you've been you know around for so long and obviously these search worlds didn't really exist back then you know how how long would it take you to find like specific avatars or like certain characters back you know back in the day uh back in the day things were different um i would so the early early days i used original cast characters that i would try to like find and stuff but when i got into anime characters there were times i was looking for lots of cool animations i would just spend hours hopping through like i searched up naruto and just hopped through all of them i could and i do it on desktop it was a pain in the butt eventually uh mods came out to be more popularized and this is before ac and i would ask some friends be like hey do you have any mod on you and they're like yeah i have this mod and i can search up avatars i'm like oh, okay you search up like this specific character because it's such a specific character that i don't know how to find it like, uh, I remember the hardest avatar to find that I've ever had to find was a Kiriko avatar. Um, could not find it. Yes. And I talked to some avatar creators that were making like certain avatars. They were like, yeah, no, uh, Blizzard does not play games. And I was like, okay, maybe that's why there's not a Kiriko because of some stuff I just don't want to dig deep and know about. But it took me, uh, 13 hours actively uh, over the course of six days of searching to finally find a single Kiriko. I cannot, and this was during avatar search. They, they were, she was not in any of the avatar searches. I found her in the most random one-off world. The world I found her in had Apex Legend avatars. And then that one Kiriko was just right there. And I asked like 20 people. It was the most insane search. I've ever had for any avatar. Like the, my original av avatar for this one, um, she took me 10 hours to find because I was looking for her, like OG style avatar that I can like put as the face of the channel. And I took my time with it, but that took me 10 hours. But here I go one that was, I hope to never experience that again. <laughs> yeah, that no, was difficult. Yeah, I'll say, luckily, nowadays, you know, things are a little bit easier to find. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not somebody has uploaded it at this point um, and made it for public. Um, you know, so in that case, you know, kind of to delve um, to delve further into that aspect, you know, we went into the Avatar side, but let's talk about the world side. 
you know so what what makes a world choosable in your opinion when it comes to filming and stuff oh that's easy a world that doesn't have post-processing if it has post-processing i cannot green screen properly and you can tell by there being like this yellowish hue once you hit the green screen button because if you try to green screen in that world you are hooked you will not be able to do anything with an editor there might be a fix for it now because technology's gotten a lot better but back when i was editing it was the videos would have to be reshot so if a world had post-processing i try to avoid them nowadays not anymore because i already i've made so many videos that i will know if a green screen is ever going to be needed and since i buy actors now i don't have to rely on green screen as much because i don't have to green screen myself as much so i can access those worlds they do look better um the worlds i'm experimenting with at the moment is worlds of ambient occlusion it's the worlds that make avatar just look like blender uh, renders and everything um, and I'm trying to study how well it works with some avatars. Some anime avatars don't work well with it. Some really, really do. It really depends on the avatar. I'm trying to get some really high quality shots um, that make it look like super high upscale. So I'm starting to use VRC lens. Um, recent, like just last night, I was using VRC lens the whole recording. And it was a night and day difference. The characters look so much sharper, colorful, vibrant. Um, my piece. C was dying, but that doesn't matter. It looked good. As <laughs> <laughs> somebody who uses VIC lens for the podcast, like it's, it's, uh, it definitely, like, I, I wish I could show, like, a side by side of, like, what it looks like without VRC lens versus VRC lens. Cause obviously it's like, you know, in VR, it's a little bit darker than what, you know, everyone else is seeing. But, like, with VRC lens, it brightens it up, you know. Um, there's a little bit of orange hue, but that's mainly because the hexagons, but you can't really do much about that. Um, it still looks good regardless, you know, um, it makes everything look a lot crisper and it's more like you have more options to work with. Um, and you know, with that, so as, as somebody who's done it before, like VRC lens, you know, what, how more difficult was it to, you know, get that type of like that right type of shot for certain shots? Um, actually, strangely, pretty easy to get in really good shots for VR ceilings. That took me a little bit, but when I first got started getting the angles, I never really struggled with camera angles, especially now we have it where you can make it fly and stuff. Um, but if you record vertical, you can make it fly and be, and be vertical. So, you know, that would be great. <laughs> absolutely game changing to have that because flying you can easily change the angles and get multiple angles without having to move your body and go put the camera in a new spot especially if you're the one body acting that's a huge inconvenience and stuff so uh i don't really struggle too much with angles they're pretty straightforward for me and everything but i do plan to experiment with um what one thing i want to do is i like to have angles where the to multiple characters in a shot all the time. Uh, but I feel like that adds to more things to focus on with the video. But honestly, I am going to start watching a lot more cinematic movies and see how they do their shots. And I notice a lot of these movies do like single character shots to really focus in on the character and focus in on the, the face and everything. And I'm like, I used to do that. And that was super easy to do, by the way. That That's the easy way of recording. The hard way is having multiple people do multiple things in the shot but yeah so that that's pretty much what i'm like thinking of in the future is probably going to filmmaking classes and learn more about filmmaking and hopefully i uh, expand on that to use in my own content oh absolutely i was gonna say with that right so have you ever thought about maybe potentially checking out some of the film communities inside of vr chat specifically that is a great... Holy shoot, that's a good question. Okay, I actually recently started watching VR Chat films, and there was one that won an award. And I watched the film, and it was about... I don't remember the exact name, but it was about a girl whose family was taken away from her. She was at the bar, and the guy had the symbol in his arm. And she's like, what is you? Um, face tracking was utilized in the video. Cinematic shots were utilized in the video. Um, the sound design was high, high quality. The emotion, the music that was chosen fit super well with the scenes. And the running scenes 
were also very interesting to see how they utilize those shots and everything. And it won an award, but also the ones that didn't win in awards. I also like to watch those too, because I like to see people who study cinematics. And I feel like there's always things to learn. Some people may think, oh, you know, I'm the best at, at this in general. It's like, no, there's always stuff to learn. And you, you want to always have a learning mind. Never get comfortable as the creator. Always adapt, learn, and trust that you will never be at your peak. Because there is, if someone could reach their peak, it'd be boring at, at that point. It'd be like, what else do you improve on? No, it's always, always, always improving. And that's the special part about it. No, I thousand percent agree. And I, uh, dude, it's funny that you say that because I've literally been telling people that myself, you know, like I never consider myself like I'm, I'm not a big creator by any means. I literally, I have like maybe 130 on YouTube, whatever. But I always like to hear these perspectives because, you know, I 1000% agree with it. There's always something you can improve on. Even if you have like amazing content, getting hundreds of thousands of millions of views, there's always something to be improved. Um, so funny enough, you met, you know, you talked about, uh, some of the films. So something I'll recommend to you, um, and I actually talked about this on my first episode, uh, one of my favorite worlds when it comes to showcasing VR films and all films made in VR, uh, look into virtual film Institute, uh, VFI. Um, it's an amazing, it's amazing IMAX theater that you can literally like sit in the theater and watch VR chat made films. And they they have amazing films from like uh, communities like uh, Studio Penrose, Metacosm, Portal Media, um, and you know I believe they might have the HBO one on there. I don't remember if they do or not. Um, but there's and you know they have independent filmmakers as well. Um, and I don't know how long it'll be going up, but um, if you have a chance to go to the Project Fest World um, before. You know, I don't know if it's going to be on afterwards, but they have an entire screen in the back area of the world that showcases many different films inside of VR. So there's plenty, plenty of places to go check, uh, you know, VR chat films. But uh, Virtual Film Institute, highly recommend it. You know, especially because you get that IMAX feel like it's, oh, dude, it it's probably the best theater world that I've ever seen. Um, so highly recommend go check that out if you ever, and that goes for you too. Anybody watching, if you want to check into VR chat films, highly recommend it. Virtual film Institute. I'll take my money in the mail. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, no, it, well, it's also used for like uh big events, like rain dance immersive, um, which is, you know, an amazing like award show with like all things VR you know, they'll bring people IRL into VR chat to experience like amazing experiences with inside of VR and there's awards and all that type of stuff. Um, but that's like the world that, wow, that's one of the worlds they use. Um, super high, high quality stuff. And it's got a nice, nice UI menu that you can like select like, oh, oh, I want to watch this film. All right. Time to go into the theater and watch it. Like it's really nice. Anyways. Back to you, though. <laughs> enough, enough to interrupt. Yeah. Um, Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. Have you ever thought of maybe doing, you know, longer form content, you know, in that regard? Yeah, so um, I am, on a personal note, going on, I, I've had AHC my whole life, and it's been been diagnosed since I was a teenager, and, and it's been my, what I felt like was my superpower for the longest time. I, I could only make content that was about, like, a, at first it was like, I could get up to 30 seconds before I had to turn up, you know, turn on the subway surfers. <laughs> um. But now I can make content up to three minutes. However, it's just, I recently had a project come out and it is a 15 minute from scratch project written by multiple people, including me. And it's been a lot of effort. My attention span cannot get that project through. It has been way past the, uh, the deadline. It started three months ago. And normally a 15 minute project could take longer, but in terms of my work ethic, it should have been 
done in maybe about a month and a half. But I was like, holy shoot, this is not coming in handy. So I, I am getting on ADHD medicine soon to better focus up and everything to, for the, I felt like for me to push to the next level as a creator, which is going to be making longer content, I can really, I can write stories and uh, have my team help write stories as well. Cause I do have some writers um, that actually they write the majority of the content at the moment, but I'm getting back into writing. So I want to put that important note there. Um, like the usual series is written by one of my script writers, not by me. And I've asked him like, Hey, would you want credit? He's like, nah, I'm chill. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, um, and stuff, but he, he loves his series and everything. So for me, I really want to flush out a lot of characters. I want this character to really connect with a lot of people because I heard game theory talking one day and they're like, okay, we've made it. We have a team. We, we we're doing well. Um, the content's going great. We're making good theories, but how, how do we feel? Are we internally super happy with what we're making? And the answer was still yes, but it was like they wanted their content to connect with their audience. And I think the power of, I always tell people there's different tiers of creators. There's creators that make content and are very successful. So if you have like different tiers of them, then there's creators that put their personality in their content and are super impressionable. And a lot of people feel like they really getting to know this creator and the side of that they like to share. Then there's creators that are very more expressive about their themselves, their life, and all that stuff. And they could talk about just about anything and people listen. You know, I think Sam Solid is a pretty good example. Uh, I watch some ordinary gamers. I love watching like uh, Moist Critical. They talk about, you know, just anything really and including his life. And those creators are like more impressionable for me. I'm more likely to connect with them versus um, you know a short and video I saw on TikTok. Cause I thought, I was like, can I name the last five TikToks I watched? I did that one day and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I couldn't. And I was like, I need to work on making content that's longer and has more impression on it. Cause I think if you took game theory and then you took uh, Jake Feldman, Jake Feldman is one of the, he was like the biggest short creator. And if he stepped away, and if Matt Pat stepped away, look at how the internet responds to both. You're gonna see one have a much larger impact. They're the same, they were the same size, but there's a much larger impact because the impact of the content does have its correlation. So for me, it's like, do I wanna make content, make people laugh, or is there some point where I wanna make an impact and really connect with the audience in a much deeper level by longer content? And like the Kratos Titan Up series has been a crazy uh, journey of teaching me of like, wow, I sat here and put my heart into this video and made something like this, but really put like myself and my characters into it. It can be something really incredible. And that's uh, what I'm hoping to accomplish with the voice actors. Gotten. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, yeah, that's, totally understandable because i know like me personally when it comes to making longer content like this like it can definitely be um it can be draining to say the least you know especially when it goes into such amazing topics i because i'll hear it because I'll, I'll do it into segments i'll do like uh 15 to 30 minute segments depending on how long the episode is um just so i don't burn myself out and you know and i'll go through like the 30 minute segment i'm like okay well there's we talk about this thing that I can put on the screen and, you know, give the viewers more context, you know, that way the attention span still drawn, you know, to what's going on rather than just, you know, having two of us, you know, sit here and talk. Um, at least I, 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 for me, I feel like that's more attention grabbing than, you know, just having a camera fly around and have two people talk. That's just my personal opinion though. Um, I've gotten compliments on it. Uh, I've had some criticisms on it too. Um, I always make sure if it's like any like community or anything, I always make sure to throw them in the description. You gotta, gotta mark your, you know, dot your T's and cross your, or sorry, cross your T's, dot your I's, whatever the saying is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's been a long day. <laughs> My darn internet decided to freak out before this episode and we had to reschedule till later. Um, but yeah, so, you know, in that regard, right. Um, there's. 
God, there's so many things when it comes to, you know, uh, making content in regard. So I guess one of the things I wanted to ask was, you know, you've made so many different types of shorts and whatnot. So one of the things I wanted to ask, if there was like one or multiple um, of your favorite, like behind the scenes moments um, that may have never saw the light of day, you know, was, was there any like golden moments in your opinion that, you know, never saw the light of day that you wish would like go out into, you know, that could have been pushed. So I have a short answer for this whole, but yes, there are times where I have an amazing shot, but at the moment I, for the past two years, I don't edit my videos anymore. So it's, it's my editor's call at the end of the day. And there'll be times where it just doesn't make it. I'm like, that was such a good shot. We only agree that like my body actually we're getting hype. We're like, this shot cooked, but it just doesn't make it all production because it comes down to also the editor's judgment, which I do respect. So yeah, there are times where that happens and there are funny moments where I was like, I wish I get a blooper for this, but to tell my editors to go through three hours of footage for a blooper is kind of a little wild. That's not in their pay grade. So it's like moments like that, where that happens, when I record the what if series now, for example, I hit record when the scene happens. What I used to do was record the whole process. And I was, that's how you get two to three hours of footage. Two to three hours of footage is a lot to go through. So eventually we had to do it when we said action. And now that footage is only 20 to three minutes, making it super easy for the editor. But unfortunately we lose so many bloopers and so many moments, but I now am more content with it because I realized that the special moments live on with my body actors who give me really good feedback. And they love the What If series. They love recording them and everything. Um, and of course, there are some series where I've been like, eh, this was this this was funnier in my head. I've had that happen before. There have been like two videos we've cut completely up to 1.7 thousand that have gone out that were just like, this is just not funny. Like, I thought it was, but not. I recorded it and saw it. It's a very rare thing, but it's only happened twice. But we have cut uh two projects before really completely finished projects oh wow yeah fair no i was gonna say in in that regard right you know because and that happens quite often with uh a lot of creators you'll have like these I, ideally awesome projects but then it's like nah let's just let's do something else you know and sometimes it's it's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing you know, out of curiosity, if you don't mind me asking, like, what were what were these, you know, projects that never saw the light of day? One project that is not going to see a light of day, it was uh, Skid Me by uh, Trurags. He was the red shirt guy. And it was a joke where he was, like, um, trying to order food. And if you know Trerags, I'll explain what Red Shirt Guy is. So it was another creator who makes content. The video is still up to this day, but he got banned from TikTok for different reasons. But he went onto YouTube and became amazing at it. And everything. now he's mainly on YouTube, but then now he's back on TikTok. Um, he makes this, yeah, this Red Shirt Guy series where he'd, he'd be like, hey, I think we have a problem. He's like, sir, what are you, what are you talking about? He's like, why are you talking to me? Or something like that. He would play like, this music, this build up music. And it was just, he was a, a A1 instigator all the time. And that was the joke. So, one of the jokes that he went for um, was he was ordering food. And he's like, hey, hey, lady, can I get a, uh, like a cheeseburger? My pronouns are they, them. He's like, I don't remember trying to order for two. And when I listened to it, I was like, I was a little nervous about it. So what happened was the video got finished and I sent it to uh, my friend of five years. He's known me before I became a creator. And I was like, hey, I just, I think some parts of this is 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 funny, but the parts I have issues with is the they, them comments and the, I feel like it's making fun of pronouns. So I, I was like, okay, I'll send it to them. And I sent it to them and they're like, yeah, no, absolutely. This makes fun of pronouns. So I sent it to my friend who, uh, um, gives me a lot of advice on it. And she was like, yeah, this is not going to fly. Um, the video is funny. Like even she herself said it's funny, but she was like, I can, I can see you getting some water for this. And I was like, yeah, I was like, it, it had like two lines that were not related to that the pronouns jokes. That was really funny. But at the end of the day, I decided that it just wasn't my cup of tea. 
um he's still an amazing creator and everything it's just that joke did not hit for uh any of my friends or the audience that you know i don't think it would have hit for, for them you know because everyone's audience is different mm-hmm. oh a thousand percent I was going to say, yeah, the, you got to you gotta make sure to tread that fine line. Not enough to go over the line, but yeah, I definitely, I understand where that's coming from. So yeah, no, I was going to say, that's, it's definitely, definitely a good thing to have multiple people, you know, I, I guess peer review would be a better word for it um, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, especially ones I've known you for a long time. Um you know, that's something I, I definitely highly, you know, respect is, uh, cause I'll have some of my friends, you know, be like, Hey, um, cause they'll, they'll watch some of the episodes sometimes and they'll be like, Hey, you know, there could be some things that could change. And, and I always take it, you know, with, you know, with a full heart because I, I know they mean well, cause they've known me for a while. Um, that's one of the things. And I, I want kind of wanted to touch base, you know, was there, was there ever a moment during like your career making content that you thought something should have went straight forward. Like everything should have been fine. But then, you know, you kind of, besides like the, the, not the non light of day projects, you know, was there ever a chance of like you getting some constructive criticism that made you reconsider what exactly like you should put out by any means? That's a weird way of phrasing. Yes. Right? Yes. No, I completely understand. Um, during recordings when I was getting, I had to buy an actor and I record a lot of quite a few deals with her. And she's just like, Hey, all you do really for me is kind of use me as a background character. I was like, Yeah. She's like, Let me explain. You kind of just have me stand there and just look at you. You don't have me do anything like funny or entertaining. And I was like, Huh. Yeah. I mean, I thought I just wanted you to stand there to make it easier for you. She's like, Well, I can do more. It'd be fun for me to do more. And I think it'd be fun for the audience to see the character have more language to to speak so it's not just you it's also you know me and we tried it um and the video went really well and i was like oh my gosh i'm gonna start telling my actors hey, hey if you're like in the background you think anything's funny do it and that's why some videos will see them actually the most recent video a goofy video goofy versus palpatine the first like two seconds i told the buyers i was like do whatever you want so they got on top of the uh, the thing. And one guy was just one guy was on his back, and the other guy was on top of him, just, just doing the Fortnite right the point in mode. And <laughs> the nerd you threw money at them. It was hilarious, and it made the video so much better. Like I showed the people that video, some of my voice actors video, because I was like, "Hey, your project you voice act for is coming out soon," and I show them it, and they were dying laughing when it popped up. They it, it added so much to the video to just have things in the background and give them that freedom to instead of say, hey, stand here like a brick wall so you, we at least just have dialogue references of who they're talking to and what person they're talking to. So, yeah, criticism is an amazing thing. All criticism can be taken with the grand salt because at the end of the day, the people who give criticism are, are trying to help, but there could be parts that are missing some information or there are parts that aren't as well. Um, I've had that happen before, but I always love criticism because I don't get it often because unfortunately a lot, a lot of people give me the benefit of the doubt. They're like, you're already a big creator. I'm like, no, I, I love criticism. In fact, recently I had criticism on how I was running a certain section in the team. Um, and so literally before I came here, I got in a call with someone who specializes in audio. And he taught me about audio. He, I used to think that when you're voice acting or something, as long as you have a really good mic, you're going to cook. Turns out that, that is a part of the process, but the really important part is your environment. If you got a fan going and all that stuff and you have a great mic, you're still going to have some struggles. And he explained it and showed me examples and everything. He was like, it's t- t- technically it might be 20% mic and 80% environment. Because I was like, I kept wondering sometimes why would some of my voice actors go into their closet? I understand now because the clothes act as, you know, cheap soundproof. And I was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And he taught me a lot more to where I can now equip uh, my voice actors with a lot more clarity. 
and a lot more knowledge about things that I had no clue of. I had no clue what an equalizer was until today. Now I know what an equalizer is and how important it is and how incredible. Like, I did not know. And uh, honestly, I used to record some of the voice actors' lines through Discord. He explained to me why that's a terrible idea. He's like, Discord filters it. So when I need to edit it for clarity, it's like trying to grate cheese with a filter instead of a grater. You're just, it's just not going to happen. And you're just going to get a dirty filter that is just a messy uh, combustion and stuff. So I was like, oh, and then he gave me the tools. He's like, if they only have these resources, this is what they should use. Do not record voice lines through Discord. He gave me live examples. I was like, it was crazy. It was, it was absolutely incredible. It was, it was amazing. I love criticism. Seriously, it, especially criticism that really does hit. I feel like criticism is a big part of where I am today. If I couldn't take criticism, I'm not sure I would be where I am. Oh, a hundred percent. With the audio in mind, you know, when you when you first started, you know, what did you ever just use like your normal headset mic, you know, or did you just always, you know use an audio program of some sort before you know shooting so uh i still use it to this day i am how many hours do i have on this program it is my go-to number one i have twenty-eight thousand hours on this program um it is called soundpad it is amazing. I always recommend it to everybody. There probably may be something better now because it's been, you know, I've been using it for years, but it is my go-to sound pad. It replays the sound through my mic and I can lip sync and act out the audios that we have and stuff. But uh, I would worry about audio quality if I was voicing and improv my own things or if I was live streaming. But since I don't do either of those, I don't work on fixing up the audio quality. And also the index mics, audio is phenomenal it's a really good mic uh, so yeah soundpad is definitely definitely a useful tool um as somebody who also uses soundpad for some shorts content highly highly effective tool um but yeah so you know with that one of the things i wanted to ask you was um because we were we're actually running a little bit out of time surprisingly enough i'm surprised time has flown i'm not i'll keep it a buck 50 time has flown <laughs> um no, but I would say one of the things I wanted to ask was, uh, you know, with, with the whole, like, what if series, um, you know, uh, one of the things I was wanting to ask was, was there any other, like, potential, like, maybe mainstream or indie related series that you were, like, maybe planning on, you know, doing in the future? Like, any, like, new stuff? Yes. Um, I'm planning on... I don't know what to name that series. I won't say a name, but I am planning on the, you know, the, the dap up tournament of power. It did super well. That guy, I've actually been, we've been following each other for like, I think over four years now. And there's something I'm cooking with it. I have the vision in my head about it. Do I think it's going to be game changing? It's going to be a very creative process. And I've gotten the connotations down. I gotten, some of the writings down it only got conceptuated a week ago but it's going to be a tournament style thing that's going to be it's going to catch a lot of people off guard and be very very creative like very very creative and that's a big part of what i'm aiming for another thing is i am planning to launch the it's not original it's a spin-off series that the guy has made with the Krails, uh series Planning to expand that more. Kratos has really had enough, but I was also planning to expand the the Count Dracula series that should be coming out hopefully before the end of this year. I'm that I'm that is the one I'm very excited about because um, his name, the person who made the Kratos series, um, person who makes those audios is um trevo in the titan absolutely talented person he is so so funny deserves so much recognition i'm so glad to anytime i make any piece of his work it cooks and i think that is a big part um a lot of people have asked me hey you use ai in a lot of your videos and you also have voice actors do you plan to only use 
is strictly how I tell them, I'm like, I know what I know in my head and the voice actors are going to cook. God, that's all I'm going to say. They're going to cook. It's just, I need time to learn, understand, adapt, and really start cooking with them because there are some things that voice actors can do that AI just cannot do. And it is an incredible thing. So, um, I love both sides of the projects though, but I will say I'm, I see a lot more potential with the voice acting in the Kratos Dad Enough series. That can't be redone with AI right now. That quality that he brings in, the yelling, that's the one thing AI really sucks as the yelling. It cannot be redone like that. So that is a very good point of how voice acting just brings this special quality. And the special part is they also bring their own special twists to the scripts that otherwise we wouldn't know of. Same for my actors. They bring their own special thing to the videos. No, absolutely. And I 1000% agree on that, you know, voice acting when it comes to AI versus voice actor, you know, uh, voice actors, realistically, they give the lines emotion, you know, they give, they make the line essentially in its own art piece in its own right. Um, I was going to say in that regard, like it's, it's more, you get to empathize with the feelings of the voice actor rather than AI because AI has a hard time uh, where it stands right now. AI has a hard time persuading that um, in that regard. So that's, yeah, no, that goes for anybody else using, you know, AI versus voice actors. Use your voice actors. You'd be surprised. Um, I'll say, I know um, one of the things that I wanted to touch base on uh, before we ended off. So for... You know, one of the last questions I want to ask, you know, for the main people, you know, many people listening over at home on Spotify, YouTube, wherever, um, you know, if you had one piece of advice uh, when it comes to starting out or maybe maintaining a content creation channel, you know, what what's one solid piece of advice that you can give, you know, for the listening audience at home? At the start, have fun with it, you know. Do it when it's, if it's, if it's not fun and you find success, eventually burnout will follow very quickly. I've seen it time and time again, but if you are having fun with it, ask yourself that question a lot. Am I having fun with it? Did I find the content that makes me happy? And then how do I translate that happiness better with my audience? kind of thing that part is extremely important when it comes to it because i've seen a lot of people get very successful but then they get burnt out from the thing that made them successful and they just try to do something else but it just is so different and they don't research how to handle those things and it just doesn't go well and it ends up turning into a stressful job and once turns stressful they leave i've seen it time and time again unfortunately so um but once you do find what makes you happy, be consistent because by being consistent it makes you try more. And the more you try, the better you get each try and the more comfortable that you're able to get with that process. So you don't get scared about it because there is overthinking that can happen. So if I were overthink, I just throw on the headset, I jump in VR and by the time I'm there, there's not much more overthinking to do at that point because it's just time to get to work kind of thing. So, um, and practice gratitude. Like, you know, um, I have a second account and that account was to help me practice, like having a smaller account and uploading what like more niche stuff that I thought was funny, but I didn't think was good enough for the main channel, but it was like my break zone at the time. It was, it really was super helpful back in the day. I don't use as much now, but it was like my place of peace was my second channel. Cause I could just post whatever I wanted to and not think twice about it on my main channel. I know the algorithm well enough to know this video won't hit or this video won't hit. But my second channel is completely free of the algorithm when it comes to that. I don't think about the algorithm when I post to my second channel. I just post what I think is funny. Like maybe it's a nine second video. So if you do find success, I recommend a second channel just to post whatever you want. You know, have fun with it. You might, and don't feel guilty about posting on there once every like six months. <laughs> that's how i am with my second show right now no fair that's yeah dude uh that's totally fair 
And it's very smart too, because you know, then you could just have one for your main content and then have one for like just whatever you want to upload. You know, have fun with it. You know, I I totally shoot. I may have to start making a second channel. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> no, but uh, no, Xavier, dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It it means the absolute fucking world to me. Uh, some very fucking wise words across the board. Uh, so before we go, I do want to give you the floor. Um, you know, please tell the audience where they can find you, you know, any social media stuff you want to link in the description, you know, the floor is yours. Tell them where they can find you and all that stuff. Okay. Um, my name is, wow, wow. Of course they know my name. I I already said it like at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I can be found on YouTube at Super Xavier, on TikTok at Super Xavier, or Super Xavier too well. There are two TikTok accounts. Um, I also can be found on Facebook. Facebook is like my main focus at the moment. So I can be found on Facebook at Super Xavier. And, you know, if you do speak different languages as well, um, look out for that in the future. There's some stuff coming with that that I'm really excited about that's in the works. And, you know, so those are pretty much my socials that I currently use. But I'm the most active on YouTube by a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, Xavier, dude, thank you once again for coming on the Novit Notes podcast. It, this has been, I, this has probably been the most fast paced like episode I've ever done. Like, I've it, it has not felt this short to me. So, like, just going back and forth, like, it, it felt really nice. So, yeah, dude, thank you so much. You know, it, it's been a blessing on that front. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, hopefully hopefully you enjoyed it. I know uh, I I was... Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was going to say... Uh, I freaking love being on podcasts. Yeah, I'll say there's uh, there's one thing that, uh, funny enough, I talked to Wolf Beeps, uh beforehand um in that regard i was like if i can get at least once for him to say oh that's a good question i've already won like i I, like that's all i wanted (laughs) i I wanted that i wanted i wanted at least one well because i've heard you talk so much on the panels and stuff and uh you know i was like yeah like if i can get him to say it at least once i'll call the episode a win no matter what happens like it doesn't matter about the views if i can get it once we'll call it we'll call it done um (laughs) but yeah no I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed it. I I definitely enjoyed it myself. Um, But ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, that is it for episode 19 featuring Super Xavier. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, This was absolutely a blast. Um, You know, if you are coming back to watch some of the other episodes or future episodes, make sure to hit that subscribe button because why not? You're already coming back anyway. But You know, make sure to click the like button, leave a comment down below, you know, maybe, you know, share whatever your favorite Super Xavier short is. If you're a Super Xavier fan, you know, I'll, I'm actually curious what, uh, there's a lot of good shorts out there. I'm just fair warning, (laughs) Um, but, (laughs) but with that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.